Hi, this is Russell Stanner from teachertraininvideos.com. I've got a great video for you today if you like Mentimeter. I'm gonna show you some of the advanced features in Mentimeter, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like for the student and for the teacher. So this is a longish video, but if you're kind of good at Mentimeter and you really wanna learn some of the advanced features, then watch this video, and particularly as I come to the end, I'm gonna show you more and more. It really does build up into quite a comprehensive video on the key features in Mentimeter. If you don't know Mentimeter, Meetup. There's also introductory video on the screen now, which you can click on. Really hope you like the video. As always, if you do, please like it, please share it, and please comment on it. Let's get started. Now, the one of the first things I would say about Mentimeter is it's one of the most generous free tools that you can get. You are not limited by the number of presentations you create. I'm going to show you some of my presentations. And I'm actually going to start by just showing you one or two examples before we look into some of the advanced features. Let's look at this talk I was given the other day. I had two, more than 300 teachers on board and I was asking their opinions about why it's difficult to teach online and you can see all the different answers and you can see that they're moving in fact if I click in present it'll probably look better and you can see that um, it will show you all of the answers that the teachers wrote onto the screen and I did this so easily I just wrote the question shared the link to the Mentimeter and then teachers accessed the link and wrote their answers and they all come back to me on the screen so it's a lovely example of what you can do with Mentimeter. So what I'm going to try and do in this video is to show you some of the alternatives that many people don't make use of in Mentimeter. I see quite a lot of teachers working with Mentimeter and they tend to use certain question types quite a lot and not very the many different question types that we can create and also the interactions that work with those. I'm gonna start straight away by just showing you this one. It's a voting one or a ranking one. And what you do here is you basically offer the students or whoever you're asking the question to a number of different options and they rank them first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then you get the results. And the interesting thing is that as people are voting live, the uh, the people the the rankings will move up and down depending uh, which one is the most popular. It's a really nice question type to use. I'm going to actually show you how it looks like as well from the student point of view. And let's start by actually creating one and looking at some of the options. So the way that Mentimeter works is that you can create a whole variety of different questions, and you can see them here on the screen. And for each one of these, a link is generated that allows the students or the participants in a talk to access the link and answer the question through their phone or through their computer. So this means that Mentimeter is good in the classroom because students can access on their telephones, online because students can access via their computers, and therefore it's really good also for hybrid. So if you've got half the class in the room, half the class online, both groups of students can be accessing the same material and that's really powerful. Now when I see teachers accessing this website and using it, they tend to use a very limited number of questions and they're not aware of some of the options that are available, particularly the options in terms of the way that information is presented. So what I'm gonna to do to start with is just look at a couple of the more interesting question types and then show you exactly what it looks like when we share the link and get the students to work and answer the question, and then to show you what the results look like. So let's start, first of all, by looking at this one called Scales. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the Home button and create a new presentation and do it that way to keep it really simple. We're gonna call this one Scales, okay? And then gonna click on Create Presentation. We come into this area, and what we're gonna do then is click on the one that allows us to kind of do scales. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, can you rate these technologies? Okay, and I'm going to give people the option to scale a particular number of technologies and we'll use Padlet and then we'll perhaps we'll put in Google Forms and we'll also include, for example, WordWall, which was a very popular technology. I'm going to add another one in here and we'll put in perhaps Zoom. Okay, so I'm just doing a quick example here. Now, 
notice straight away in terms of the results I've got two ways of doing this I in this particular one I like using the slider so we've got two different ways of presenting the the information once the students have answered the question and then here we can change the scaling system so we've got strongly agree strongly disagree but we can obviously change that and overwrite it and use something different yeah so like for example really don't like or really don't like let's just say and let's change that one to really love it and then okay so we've gone from one to five we can change the scaling as well um, it's quite interesting to show the total average of all statements that could be something you want to do let participants skip single statements I'm going to turn that off but turn that on now we've uh, more or less got the question ready I'm now going to click on the in fact I'm going to click on the share button and what I'm going to do in this particular case is I'm going to use this link here and I'm going to copy that link and I'm now going to log in as if I was a student and I'm going to start to answer the question so I've copied the link I'm going to come over now to another browser I'm going to paste that link in and I want to just show you how that looks as you can see now uh, the students what they have to do is obviously decide on what they're going to give for a particular te technology okay so uh, I'm gonna put mine like that okay and then I can submit my answers now the great thing is that all of those answers are immediately collated together and I can present them to the students so they can even see live as different students are voting now if I click, I can only see that obviously one person's answered the question. If I click on configure, if, sorry, if I click on, click on present, you can see that the information is presented to me and I could be showing this on, on the screen, I could be screen sharing it and it will really show me and it will update as students vote and so the numbers will be changing live as the vote is taking place. Now what I'm going to do now is add an additional slide. We can add up to three slides on every presentation three slides is the limit for the free tool and when we add those slides we can actually decide if we control when the students move from question one to question two to question three or if the students can control it so we can actually use this in a kind of variety of ways I generally like to control it myself because I like to present the results but it is possible also to set it as audience paced rather than teachers paced so the first thing we're going to do is going to add another slide onto the screen and now we're going to choose another question type so the question type I'm going to go for is ranking and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to rank uh, let's say rank these technologies okay in terms of use and what I'll do is I'll just stop the video why I add the answers in so I've added my five possible options here I can add more if I want to I've got a few customization things here I can customize for example when I want to stop the voting when I don't want to allow people to vote anymore I can hide the instruction bar and I can hide the results I'm not going to do any of those changes I'm actually quite happy with all of these but what I'm going to show you in this one is first of all how it works for the student but then how it's visualized for the teacher because it's really interesting to see that so we now go over to the share button and we're going to do first of all the same thing as we did before we are going to answer the questions by just sharing this link so I'm going to copy this link and jump over as a student now one thing to keep in mind before we start is that we've already got one question we've now got two questions so when we share this link there'll be two questions to do but the presenter will decide when the next question comes onto the screen now another thing is that I've already answered question one so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset the results okay for the all the slides and now we're back to zero again now when I share this link and this is where it perhaps we start to get into some of the uh, higher level features I'm going to copy the link I'm going to log in now as the student I'm going to paste in that link and again I'll need to answer this first question so I'm going to quickly do that just quickly put in some answers and then submit my answer now what will happen is you'll notice that the second question is not available for me because it's controlled by the teacher now if we come back into teachers view and click on present you'll notice 
that the teacher can be waiting, all of the answers are coming onto the screen, the teacher sees that everyone has voted, and then the teacher can click on this button here, and now the second question will come onto the screen. Now I thought it'd be interesting to show you what happens as students are selecting the things that they want to rank. So I'm now answering this question on my telephone and look what happens on the teacher's screen as I answer the question. And as you saw, as soon as I received the information back inside of Mentimeter, the screen updated and it will continually do that as different students are voting. So it tells me now how many people have voted. It updates automatically as new people vote. And if you come down here, you've got a number of options. Uh, you can hide the results if you want to do that. But most of the time, it's nice to show the results. You can close the voting. You do have a countdown feature here. And if you click on that, then it's going to start giving the students only a certain amount of time to actually answer the question. And of course, you can move on to the next question. Now, remember, in a free tool, you can only add three questions in total. Now another advanced feature that you might find useful is that if we click on the configure button, we can allow students to make comments on the questions. So we can expand that if you want to have a quick look and we can set that to let your audience react with comments to your presentation. Comments will show up immediately and disappear without any interaction. The comments will not be saved and cannot be exported. It's just a quick way of allowing students that when they're answering the question, they can leave a quick comment. And if we jump over now to see what that would look like for a student, you can see here that uh, we've got now the option to comment. So yes, we're answering the questions as we always do, but if we want to, I can also add an additional comment. So for example, let's say I come through to these answers and then I want to add a comment here and I'm just going to say, I, sorry, didn't work, we need to click on it yet. I also, like let's put that into the correct i also like adobe connect okay and then i could then add that as a comment and that will immediately appear on the screen if we come back to the screen um you'll notice it could, i don't know if you saw it just for a few seconds it appears on the screen so i'm just going to show you one final feature I'll point out a couple of final things I'm going to click on configure one very useful thing is that we can make the presentation audience paste rather than presentation paste and another thing that we can do is that we can ask the students to um, add questions or we can allow them to add questions now if I click here um, just to expand and see that one and we're going to choose only on Q&A slides okay so we're going to set that we'll leave the rest um, as it is unfortunately you can't use this facility unless you've got pro so you can't control the questions so it may be something that you're perhaps going to be a bit careful with if you're working with younger students but if we click off now and what we need to do then is add a new slide and the question we're going to add is Q&A slide and a Q&A slide will simply allow students to add questions now as a final time I'm going to log in again as a student and work through the three questions and this time you'll notice that I'm allowed on slide three to add my own questions so for the final time, I'm going to copy the link. I think it's really nice to see what the students do, which is the reason why I keep doing this. So it's absolutely clear. So I'm going to answer the first question. Again, just simply putting in my answers. Remember, I can comment. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to submit. I'm now going to answer the second question. Again, I could at any point comment if I wanted to add a little comment. So it's kind of adding additional interaction into the whole um, procedure, submit. And now on the third one, I'm going to open the Q&A and I'm going to write in a question. And my question is going to be, what do you think of Adobe Connect? Okay, just as a simple example, submit it. Let's have a quick look what the teacher sees. Remember when we were playing that game, it was student controlled. And if we come to the third screen and we uh, put it into presentation mode, we can see the first question has appeared on the screen. And obviously as more questions come on the screen, they will just appear here. One final thing to keep in mind, obviously I added three questions there together. You don't have to do that. Of course, you can just create a new presentation by going on the home button and just adding one question to your presentation. That really is up to you. And I often do it with just one question, but of course it's 
quite useful sometimes to have a variety of different interactions with your students. Okay, really hope that video was useful. The more I work with Mentimeter, the more I like it. I'm using it all the time now in my presentations. Please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com if you want more free videos. Don't forget as well, if you want to follow my work, the latest webinars, the blog posts, the online courses, all the new videos, then please join me on my newsletter and you also will get a free six part video course on using technology and teaching and learning at the moment. So that's quite useful. Uh, you can of course follow me on my YouTube channel and don't forget to click on the bell to get all the latest um, videos. And finally, if you do want to contact me about doing any training or even doing a talk for your organization, then you can contact me from the website. Thank you very much.